we're going to look here at this exam question with reference to figure 2 and extract A examine two factors that may have caused disinflation in China in 2014 you've got to make sure here that you do exactly what it tells you to do so you've got to refer to figure 2 and extract A and then the question word is examine and examine remember you need to have evaluation for that and it's two factors, make sure you talk about two, not one or three or anything else, that may have caused disinflation in China in 2014. You need to know what disinflation is. Now, easy way to remember that is that the word disinflation still has the word inflation in it. And disinflation is where you still have inflation but at a lower rate. So for example, in one year your inflation might be 2% in year one, and then in year two your inflation might be 1.5%. So you still have inflation, there's still a sustained increase in the average price level, but in year two it's a smaller sustained increase in the average price level than it is in year one. So that's what disinflation is. So let's have a look at figure 2 and extract A, and we need to find these two factors that cause disinflation. The first one, if we look at figure 2, this is just showing us what in China's inflation rate was, measured using the Consumer Prices Index for this period of time. It's showing an annual percentage change, and you can see, let's just double check, did they ask us, so disinflation in 2014, so 2014 is from here all the way along and we can see that we've got disinflation from here to here also from here to here that is not disinflation because you've still got inflation but at a high rate but this is disinflation definitely here you've still got these are still positive numbers so you still have inflation but they're smaller positive numbers here that are actually the same but then it's smaller and it's smaller so what you'd need to do just in respect of this would just be to say that, for example, in July 14, the rate of inflation was 2.3% using the CPI, whereas in August 14, it was only 2%, and in September 14, it was 1.6%. So the rate of inflation was decreasing. Then... When you've looked at figure two, you now need to look at extract A. We need to find these factors which cause the disinflation. So why do we have a decreasing rate of inflation? This isn't actually what happened, but this would be an example. What's caused that to happen? Why aren't prices going up as much as they were before? There are a few points that they've raised. So first of all, it says, in China, consumer price inflation is at a near five year low. So you could also refer to that because that's talking about the disinflation. The drop in global energy costs has led to weaker inflation everywhere. Now, so this would be one point that you could use, one of the factors. So this is saying that in the world, energy costs have fallen. This will largely be to do with the price of oil. And if your energy costs go down, especially oil, that will mean that the price of electricity goes down as well. And generally costs are going to go down for businesses. And this is a bit like a supply side shock. If you were looking on a an ADAS diagram with the price level here and real output here, if you had a sustained decrease in energy prices in the world, you'd actually see a decrease in the price level or you might see less inflation but that would be because your productive potential will increase because now you are capable of producing more because your costs have gone down so your productive potential goes up if this is occurring over the longer term say if oil prices are lower here you actually see a fall in the average price level but actually it might be that you just have less inflation through energy prices than you did before. So this is one thing that you could talk about. Another one is 
it says that China had severe overcapacity. That means that they've got a very big output gap. And if you have a very big output gap, you're not producing at your potential. And even if you have an increase in demand, you won't have a lot of inflation as a result. That would be shown on the diagram like this. Because if your initial equilibrium is down here, because and you have all of this spare capacity, even if you have an increase in aggregate demand, say to here, you don't actually have an increase in the price level. You only move from here to here, but your price level stays here. And that would be a reason why you might not have as much inflation as you did before. That then is the second factor. So you could just talk about these first two, or you might choose to use this one. Insufficient demand from home and abroad. This would mean that consumption is lower than it would be otherwise. Investment would be lower than it would be otherwise. Firms wouldn't want to invest due to consumption being lower. And demand from abroad, that means that exports would be lower than otherwise. All of these things lead to aggregate demand being lower. So you're not going to get demand pull inflation. You won't be seeing lots of this happening, lots of demand, aggregate demand increasing. And therefore, you're less likely to have as much inflation. So you'll have disinflation, potentially. That is a third factor. Remember, they only want two, but that's another one you could talk about. Now, they're the main ones which they bring up. So there are three which they bring up mainly. And you've also, though, because it says that you must examine, that means that you need to evaluate as well. And the way that you might evaluate is to think about how the points that you've raised already might not occur or why they might not occur quite in the way that you expected them to. So if we go back to the oil price here, if you're saying that one of the reasons for the disinflation was that the oil price has gone down, you, for your evaluation, you can question whether the oil price will increase again. And when might that happen? Because if the oil price goes up, they may, then might start to see cost push inflation because their costs overall will go down. It will be the opposite of this. LRAS would shift to the left if this happens over the longer term, if the oil price goes up. That would be an evaluation for that point. If you're talking about the severe overcapacity and this insufficient demand, you could talk about what they're doing in China to try and stimulate consumption. So they might be using fiscal policy or monetary policy to try and stimulate consumption domestically. They might also, we know that actually they're doing a lot of investment in China, so that's probably not so relevant here. But as regards exports being lower, they and that causing less inflation, they actually talk down here, it says they may decide to use currency devaluation. So this would be an evaluation point here, because you could say that they might devalue their currency and if they devalue their currency their exports will become cheaper so actually they'll export more and if they export more then that would help their aggregate demand and it wouldn't be lower it would actually be higher and the other thing as well if you remember this strong pound imports cheap exports dear if they were to devalue their currency and they had a weak currency that would actually mean that whilst their exports would go up, also their imports would come down because imports will be more expensive. And overall, that would cause their aggregate demand to go up. And therefore, you might have less disinflation and you might start to have inflation instead. And remember, because it's just a ten, an eight mark, eight mark question for examine, you don't need any conclusion or anything like that. You just need to make sure that you have your two factors and you evaluate each of those. And don't forget to refer to figure two and extract A as they told you to.